from the Bluegrass State, it's the Tom Micah Show. Really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together down the radio. It's like this 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course. It teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello to Sean on the Tom Like His Show. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. So, um, 22, and I've been dating this girl for, I don't know, on and off for a year. And finally kind of got into it, and... I don't know, we pretty much called it off today and broke up. And I'm debating on if I should or if I shouldn't. Should or shouldn't what? Uh, actually finish it and break up with her. You just said you broke up with her. Well, we had a big old fight today, and basically we're supposed to talk tonight. <sighs> You're 22 and she's 18. Why do you need a girlfriend? Uh... It's not that you really need a girlfriend, because I guess whether I'm with her or, with a, or if I'm not, I can, you can still get laid, because I've been listening to you for so a long time. So then why do you, if you don't need a girlfriend, why do you have one? Uh, it's f fun to go out with her. Um, I go out and do a lot you of don't have, oh, you, She stuff. does not have to be your girlfriend to go out with her. Yeah, but it's easier to kind of keep track on them and be, be able to do ah, what there you want. We like, go. you got to have them around. There we go. You want to keep her from having sex with other guys. That's why you uh, call her your girlfriend, right? Uh, I mean, because you're a little, you're a little, mind. you're a little boy who gets jealous, and you're afraid that she might have sex with somebody else, and you want to prevent that from happening. Isn't that right, little boy? Uh, <laughs> no, that's part of it, but no, I mean, that's like, I don't know, down the road, other stuff we've already had to deal with. Well, then what uh, is it? Huh? What is it? What is it? What is what? Tom. Hello? Are you intentionally acting like a brick, or are you a brick? Which is... <laughs> no, I'm not acting like a brick. Ask me a question, and I'll, I'll respond. I did. I, well, I can't hear you. I'll, I'll... Do I have to repeat everything I said over and over and over? No, I can't hear. It's, why do you... Up, I don't get good reception. Wh why do you need to have a girlfriend? Uh, so I can get laid, I guess, whenever I want. And you just said you, you, just said you could do that. You just said you could do that. Yeah. So, but so if you can do that, you don't girl, need a girlfriend, do you? With a girl, with one girl. Why? So I don't got to do, well, so I don't got to deal with all the other drama of all the other girls. Like, what about the so drama you're getting from this with, one girl now? Well, yeah, I, I'd rather deal with one girl's drama than five girls' drama. Why not deal with nobody's dramas? You have sex with them, and then when they start to talk, you say, "I'm done for the night. See ya." Yeah. But usually you gotta like start off the night and do something and spend no more. No, you don't. Like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Do no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't even do that much. Once you've got them in the stable, you don't have to do anything with them. Yeah, I, I've, I've had that before too, and it's nice. But then I just things always seem to come up. Either they get jealous or something. Something happens. So fine. So you move on to somebody else because you've got such game. You can always find more chicks. You were just telling us that. Yeah, that's true. But it's I don't know. It's just it sucks having to go through all these different girls. And Why? Deal with it when you can just have one and not have There's to worry nothing. about it. You... Well, now, well, you are worried about it, and you are dealing with it, and you are dealing with her drama right now. Yeah. So, I don't and know. Why do you call me for advice? Don't you don't want my advice. You want me to put the rubber stamp on your stupid stuff that's going on over there. <laughs> yeah, I guess more or less. Well, I'm not doing it. Call the wrong show. Right. You call Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil loves to stir that butter churn up there over there, you know, and just have you churning over all these problems. Okay, we got to talk. We got to talk about where this relationship is going. Blah, 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 blah. Yo, why don't you just call Dr. Phil? 
Because I'm not trying to deal with like the you call the wrong like, show. The you're, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get a rubber stamp on this stupid drama you're engaging in with your 18 year old girlfriend on this show. And what made you think this show would be the show you could call and get that rubber stamp? Uh, I don't know. I've been listening for so long. It, it's like it's guided me along for a long time, and I finally kind of like just want to stay with one girl to get over having to deal with all the girls. And right. uh, you just broke up with her. But you know uh, you don't even have yeah. the balls to say broken up with her. You're gonna go back and get into some more drama tonight, aren't you? Uh, I have no clue. You just told have, me that. I have, I have stuff to do this weekend, so I'm trying to like avoid her in a sense, so we can just put You're it off. You're making me sick. You're making me sick. I can't. I can't take it anymore. I'm. A, that's enough. Call in here and whine, and then wait for me to say, "Oh yeah, you know what? Even though it's against every rule I have." This just sounds like the perfect teenage relationship. <laughs> You're just doing the exact right thing, son. Just keep going. Keep breaking up and getting back together and talking about all her little tiny problems. And everything's a big deal. You just keep doing that, son. That's great. Wrong show. Stop taking their crap. It's time to bring someone else in with a bullpen. You know the deal. Get the middle reliever in there. The one with the rubber arm. The inning eater. You know what I'm talking about. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Likus 101. I am your professor. This is Buddy. Buddy on the Tom Likus Show. Hello. Hey. Hey. Hey, uh, I, I feel like I'm a success story. I just uh, discovered you kind of just a couple of minutes ago whatnot. I think I've heard you before, but um, and just relating, um, I've discovered that women are, it's like in their genetic code to just destroy you if I can. <laughs> um, but uh, to, to go back, I'm 33 years old, and uh, as I turned 16, 17, I'd find these little girls that I had crush on, and I was kind of overweight and most of them wouldn't have nothing to do with me. And as years have progressed, they got married, they got pregnant, they got married, they got pregnant, they got on drugs, they got on whatever they do. And now within this last month, I've had about three different girls come out of my past start hanging out with me. And want to know, you know, I come down and visit you and all that. And I, I finally broke away from all the BS and just, you know, like, hey, buddy, you're just going to be by yourself. Enjoy it. And so when I get in touch with a girl and I go hang out with her, it, it's just a leg, you know. And uh, is it, I don't know, the combination of being ugly and overweight or something, I, I think it's a blessing in disguise. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, because it has kept me out of the trap that you were just recently just sitting here telling the other two guys, you know, it, it's too late for them. Um You know, it, it, if they can learn anything and divorce... You know, as soon as they get divorced, the girls are going to bring home two guys, two different guys. It's like you are saying a while ago. They're going to bring home one they could show off, and then when that ain't uh, available or when that and they're just sick of it, they're going to get one to support them. You know, and you just got to figure out which idiot you want to be or just leave them alone altogether. See, I, you, know? you know what I want to be? I, I don't want to be the reliable guy, the dependable guy. Right. Well, uh, the, that, guy, the guy who is financially you know. stable, the guy who is uh, uh, mentally and emotionally reliable, I don't want to be that guy because, no. you know what, while she's having sex with me, she's fantasizing about some drunken, drug-addicted, leather-clad, long-haired loser uh, that could ride her like a pony. Yep. And it was it, the best it, sex she ever had while she's there with me, and the, there I am, Mr. Reliable. Okay, honey. We're going to go to Sandals for a week, and uh, we'll go make love the entire week, sweetheart. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, do I want to be the guy going to Sandals? No, I don't. I want to be the guy who gets you up against the wall in a back alley somewhere so you never forget me after I kick you out the door. Yeah. Well, see, um, like, like I said, it's irony. I, I've gone from uh, a passive, never getting any action, to within the last two weeks, I've had relations with six different girls. Okay. So, again, so in other words, since you started tuning in, you're getting more ass than a toilet seat. Is that right? Well, yeah. But I, I tell you what's happened. The only reason I'm getting it is because all the guys that they were with and were, you know, they were showing off and all that. They, uh, they're burnt out. They're drugged up. They're, right. They're and all, now they come you back know. to you, you, because they, see, they, they had no idea. They had no idea how good they had it with you. 
Well, and I don't care now because I've seen their exactly. dead plate. I've gotten well because they stepped over your dead body to get to the other guy. That's why you don't care. <laughs> I like y'all just looking for y'all just looking for uh, somebody to feed you. Y'all ain't nothing but chicken heads, you know. Um, <laughs> hey, I know. But I like I sit back. I go over to their house and I see three kids run around and I and like two of them ain't got the same daddy and and, and stuff like that and right. and, <laughs> and I kid, <laughs> God. I, you know, I'm out here working. I, I sweat my brains out. I got little education, but what money I do make either goes into if I want a TV or if I want a VCR or if I want to make another trust payment, you know, and not a dime of it goes to some other dude sitting on my baby's mama's couch drinking beer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. And that, by the way, that could have been you. Isn't that scary? Right. I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord, for the ugly look. <laughs> you know? That's thank right. This, I was blessed with this body. But after years of not having any women around me too much, I haven't gone to any kind of real drug addiction or alcohol addiction to learn how Good to deal you. with them. No. So, I, so now, you know, 15 years later, I look better than most of the guys that they were hanging out with, you know? Absolutely. And so now they all want you. <laughs> it's just like all the women. By the way, I get invited to those high school reunions. All the women uh -huh. who wouldn't talk to me in high school, oh, classmates.com, these chicks are after me now like you wouldn't believe, because here I am now, and all the guys they, they, they went with, with a, a high school quarterback who ended up being the big mechanic down at the Shell Station or whatever, here I am doing a radio show in L.A., I make uh, quite a large income, I'm a self-made multimillionaire. You'd be amazed how many of these women now think I'm looking pretty good. But as I've told many of them, why do I need you when I can afford your daughter? Yeah, um, I, you're in L.A.? It's a cool place, ain't it? I, I tried to do a little stand-up out in uh, Houston. Uh, that's another passion, you know. Hey, once you've married into it and locked down in a situation, you, you can't explore that part of life. You just you just give up the fact what you're going to be doing the rest of your life is, is pressing the clock somewhere and just, you know, Paying. <laughs> yes, buddy, I know all about it. Tom Likis. 1 800 5 800 866. Tom Likis. 1 800 5 800 Tom. If she doesn't want to sleep with you, you know what I say? Your stock is going up, theirs is going down. Find someone hotter, make more money, get a better place in the world so you can get more and hotter women. Bing, bang, boom. It's Likis 101. On the Tom Likas Show. Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Sherry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement, Sherry? Well, when you say hello, I say hello back. But it sounds like you're asking a question. Hello? Hello? <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm a fine. Good. I have a question for you because I've been a listener, me and my husband. I am married for 12 years. And the question is, are we going to live in a society where everyone uses everyone, where we already have marriage in the effect? Of today, where everyone is getting a divorce, they don't know what marriage really is about. So they get divorced over the little bitty things instead of trying to work it out and work together. Or maybe just not get married in the first place. Well, when you are appropriating with each other and the way that this society. Appropriating with each other? I don't. What does that mean? That's something Congress does, isn't it? Excuse me? Appropriating with each other? Yeah. Do you mean having, having sex? Having, having sexual relations, I say it like Having sexual relations. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, what's wrong with having sexual relations? Do you have to marry everybody you have sexual relations with? Hmm? Excuse me? Do you have to marry everybody you have sexual relations with? Well, you have to have a foundation if you're going to have children, and the children are involved with most of, you, most of your... Darling, I, I, I have been very clear on this children, matter. I have been very have clear. have both parents. They have I have been have very clear. I father. have been very clear on this matter. And what I have said is that uh, there is a benefit to women and to children for getting married. There is no benefit to men. Yes, there are. No, there aren't. 
Yes, there are. What are the benefits? What benefits can a man get from getting married that he can't get from not being married? Okay, first thing is you have someone that's going to be there to take care of you. Well, no guarantee of that. Of, of need. There's no guarantee of that. And by the way, people can take care of you without being married. No, there's a difference. Sure they can. You're married to someone and What's the you difference? have a wife. It's going to be there. To so when you marry to somebody, you're a hostage, and therefore you're not going to leave. <laughs> no, no. I mean, if somebody cares about you, they'll take care of you, whether you sign that piece of paper or not. It's not about signing the piece of paper. Yes, it's about it is. Laying a foundation, foundation of marriage, foundation of why family. Why do you? Why do you need that? Why does a man need that? A man needs it because he's. Uh, uh, why does a man need to have a family? Why does a man need to be married? No, why does a man need to be married? That's, how, that's what, through the test of time. The only, the only difference is when... Through the test I of time. I don't want to say... But 45 percent, 45 percent of everybody in America, 45 percent, 45 percent of everybody in America who gets married gets divorced. A piece of paper to sign. It's a fact. There marriages. There was no piece of paper, but there were people living together. There were people Fine. Uh, having babies. But if they were not signing the piece of paper, the man would not. Can you hear me? Yes, do you hear me? So you're just intentionally ignoring everything I'm trying to say here? No, I'm not ignoring you. But I think you are. Well, this is a dialogue. This is supposed to be a dialogue, darling. This is not supposed to be you call up uh, like the like the hot air machine in the men's or You press the button and a bunch of hot air comes out. You know, we're supposed to have a little dialogue here. Okay. You see? I'm sorry. We'll take this one step at a time. You'll get everything in, but give me a chance to respond to what you say. Okay. And don't just keep blabbing like you do with your husband. That's why I, I don't, don't want do to be married because that's what I it's do like. I do that with my husband. Mm. I let him. I let him speak, and he'll Bill, give me the floor and let I'll me let, speak. I'll let. I'll let him be the judge of that. Okay. He's probably down there at Hooters right now looking for consolation. Well, I've taken to. to I've taken him to what is that? Baby dolls in Dallas. Oh, a strip club. Have a good time. Very nice. You take it to strip clubs. That's great. Yeah. That sounds like true love. That's the time. That's good. Uh, do you ever get a lap dance when you go down there, dear? Yes, I do. You do? Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. You ever kiss the uh, strippers at all? You ever uh, mac on no. Andy's cheeks? No. No. Maybe he does when I'm not there. I don't know, but oh, I Oh, so you go strip clubs when you're not there, too. I might That's... put a dollar bill in her panties or something there like that. There we go. Well, that sounds like quite the marriage. Well, you're sure lecturing me about uh, the sanctity of marriage. I think this is fantastic. Uh, so uh, let's review a marriage. Uh, Actually, a good, I'm not lecturing you. A good, let's strong do. foundation. Uh, you go to baby dolls a couple of times a month, sometimes with your no, husband. No, no, sometimes no, no, he no, goes no, by no. himself. It was only once throughout. You I go, you I put a dollar in the, the hook in the strippers' years. panties, right? I told you at the beginning that we've been married 12 years, but I have taken him to baby dolls. It's not once a month. It's not once a year. I took him one time. One time. Mm-hmm. Because mm. there's it's. You know, we live in the United States. There's so many things out there. We can explore certain things, certain things we don't. Because now, what do you we mean have by that? that? We have that boundary. There's a boundary. In what is the boundary? What's on the other side of the boundary? I don't know. Where is your boundary? The boundary is uh, entertainment. When you watch things on TV, like when I see Paris Hilton or someone showing their boobies or whatever on television, that's called entertainment. The only uh, difference is we went to a place for entertainment. Uh, That's the only. Entertainment. It's just like going to Las Vegas, and they have those little shows, and people are naked or whatever. I see. You see Let me ask that. you a question, darling, because we've talked about the sanctity of marriage. Uh, I assume you attend religious services on the weekend, do you? No, I don't believe in um, putting myself in a category, and I consider putting yourself in a category if you say that you belong to a certain religion. So I do know, believe in God. We, me and my husband, both believe in God. We you do. do, and you but worship by uh, the foot of a stripper in... pole. Where do you worship? Huh? You worship at the foot of a stripper pole. Where do you worship? No, we worship in the in the sanctity of our home. Well, I see. And then when the collection plate comes around, you put a dollar in the uh, stripper's panties. No, we don't do that either. What we do huh. is we. Um, donate money to the poor or we donate money to strippers, police officers poor or strippers. wherever the money is needed. I see. Yeah. All right. And uh, your question again was what? Are we going to live in a society the way that you're talking on your show 
about using people and marriage is not a big of a deal. Or sanctity, people are doing it already. Of marriage is not a big deal. Anytime you a man is paying, anytime a man never, is paying, never, men, never, never not men. No, men should never get married. Men that's should never you, get that's married. That's what that's what you that's what you promote on your. I promote. Show. You I promote ju- not disagreeing with you for Christ's sake. I just said to you, uh, men should not get married. There's no benefit to a man to get married. That's what I said. Okay. Well. Men should not get married, so they should not deal with women. We should live in sex. No, no, we places. want sex. Men should live in a no, we're not gay. We want sex. We should never see each other. We just don't want to have to listen to people like you talking. Okay, we want to have sex. And then when you start to open your mouth and flap your gums, we want to move on to the next victim. Oh, that's why I say you. Whatever you want to get, you use that person. Once you finish using that person, you jump to the next one, and you jump. Kind of like next. yeah, kind of like you use Kleenex or uh, use orange rind or something. Yeah, yeah, uh, kind of like that. Yeah, I understand perfectly. I understand perfectly. But I don't believe in misrepresenting myself. The whole world knows how I am, and any woman who sleeps with me knows how I am before well, she gets into the sack. time, so evidently you know a little bit about what marriage is supposed to I, be like. I know exactly. I know everything about marriage. That's why I would not advocate it for any, any man out there. Uh-huh. It's great for women. Now, right? It's great for women. Oh, and it's great for men, too. No, great for yeah, women because no, because women get women get those uh, lovely uh, parting gifts if the uh, marriage doesn't work out. They cash and prizes. It's like being on uh, Price is Right, a Wheel of Fortune. It, really? Absolutely. Men, men also get a benefit too, and how men get a benefit? They have a woman to watch over them, to support them, watch and over also, us, not support only that, us. We support men. you. You and don't support that, us. I work, we, we, we work together, my husband work, and I work, okay? Wow. You and act like you're doing him a favor. You act like you're doing him a favor. Put into the household. We both well, put into the household. Yeah, who how much does... benefit on both sides? Who puts so the most in? my husband gets hurt or anything, who puts the most in? also that I've saved. Who puts the most in? The family. Who puts the most in? Who puts the most in my husband? Puts yeah, the most in. of he course he does. More money than that's I do. my yeah. point. Your husband puts the most in, and that's what so I'm what saying. What happens if a woman makes more than a woman? Because there are a lot of if women. If a woman makes more than a woman? of women out there that makes more money than I'll, men. I'll ask Rosie O'Donnell what that's a like. Man, a uh-huh. man feels so insecure when a woman makes more money. He feels like he's not even a man when a woman makes more Why money. Why do you think that? No, I've, I've heard from men. Say that they do not control that they, they don't lost their manhood because the woman make more money and plus because she's well, able I can tell you to, what if guys were doing it my able, way they if guys were doing it my way they would never have to worry about that if guys were doing it my way a well, man don't like when I date a woman I don't even know how much money she makes and I couldn't care less I pray. I, but I couldn't care less we're, I'm not talking about your preference of caring I'm talking about the subject the subject is. There are men out I, I didn't, there. Oh, Jeez, you don't understand what I'm saying, do you? More money than the man does. Uh, again, I, I, I can't speak to those men. I'm not. No, that's not the subject. Actually, uh, you called in well, to talk what about what? Up. No, I asked you that, and we you went on to something else. And now when you went on to a different subject about oh who makes the more God. money, who makes the more Why don't I want to be married? Why don't I want to be married? This is what it's like. It's like Chinese water torture. Oh, no, no, the day. reason that you don't this want to is, be married it, is because, because I would have to listen to somebody to, like you. You do not want to be on the same page with your wife and both of y'all agree together. You no, 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 no. We've already spent ten and a half minutes with you. Then your husband buy a telephone. one 800 talk is our telephone number, Rod, on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How you doing? Great. Yeah, I've been listening to you since I had a, I drove for a delivery company, and all they had was AM radio. And here we are. <laughs> wow. Uh, Except we're on FM radio in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, so long ago. But uh, I, uh, I get some calls to see if I can get some advice and maybe my balls, my balls back. Let me get your balls back. I think I'm so, losing them, I think. I, they're person. probably in her purse right now. <laughs> well, hey, look, I met this girl a couple weeks ago. Cool girl. Um, she, uh, 
got a number, called her, waited a few days, and uh, we had a long conversation on the phone. Uh, she was uh, straight out. She told me that she was actually in a uh, two years ago in a seven year relationship. Uh, hey? and she had met a guy, I guess, the week before me, and she told me, look, I guess I'm just going to date like both of you because you're interested in it. I like the guy too, and when it rained the doors, I was like, all right, cool. And uh, we went on a date. I, it was, I didn't I hardly spend any money. We uh, hung out all night. Uh, I gave her, like, a, I guess, a, not a make out session, but we, we a, good, a good night kiss. And then uh, we talked a few days later, kind of taking it slow. Uh, very cool girl, uh, but I <clears throat> one one night I was I realized that was my schedule and I was open in the morning so I, I texted her to uh, meet me for coffee in the morning and I don't know if that's your rule I know lunch is kind of a friend thing this is earlier in the morning lunch is a friend thing there's no lunch yeah there's no lunch that ever turns into sex you know what I'm saying yeah so what about the coffee situation coffee <laughs> definitely there's no sex after coffee. Of course, you're right. And I, I played no. it cool, like, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm all right. Well, I'll see you later. And I want to ask her out again, but I want to play it cool, like, hey, no big, no big deal. I'll, I'll keep Are you it. looking for a girlfriend? Are you looking to get married? You don't sound like somebody wants to get laid. You sound like somebody wants to get married. Well, I think, that, I, think I put that vibe out, and I probably... I, you're putting I, it out to me? Yeah, yeah, I think I, I might have, uh, who knows, I'm not scared awake. We haven't talked for, like, I don't know, a few days, but... She's cool. No, but, yeah, but the point is, you're putting that vibe out to me. Yeah, you're right. Dang, okay. Enough said. Enough said. So what should I do at this point? Because I feel like uh, she's got the ball in her court right now. You know what well, I mean? Well, if you were playing it my way, you'd have a bullpen, and you would be uh, not hanging by your thumbs waiting for her to call. You'd be seeing somebody else. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually working on that, too. But you know. Not working on it. You'd be doing it. Yeah. All right. So should but I you're not doing it. All right, should I, should I just say later, leave it alone? Cause, uh, no, just leave it alone and date other people. And she'll call when she calls, and if she doesn't, who cares? Right, okay. You know, it, it, vaginas are like buses. You miss one, there's going to be another one along in 10 minutes. There you go. I guess I just got, I got tired of uh, going out with the, with the drama and just a bunch of, you know, craziness going on in their lives. They're either too young or they were in a relationship recently, and this girl's got a good yeah. head on her shoulder. So I was like, all right, cool. She's kind of like my people, you know. I uh, have a lot of things in common, interest music and whatnot, and uh, she's pretty, uh, you know, uh, okay. independent girl, which I like. You, you're, you're going all Ricky Nelson on me now, and it's about, really, I mean, you're in love, dude. You're in love. <laughs> no, I just met her. No, no, no. Fine. All right. I, yeah, I heard, you heard what I'm telling you. Yeah. If you start showering her with phone calls, she will retreat permanently. Uh, Have fun. You. Date other people. I hear you. All right. Well, with that said, uh, can you Stop take calling her, okay? I will. I will. No I will. coffee, I will. no coffee, no lunch. None of that, huh? Okay. No, because you'll never get into the sack with her if you're sitting at Starbucks. Right. If you want to get into the sack with a girl, there has to be alcohol present. There was the first night, but we were just we kept it cool. Uh, I mean, you get, but you've gone off the rails now. Now you're talking about having lunch, you're going to coffee. I mean, you got to stop with that stuff. All right, balls back, balls back, baby. <laughs> All right, All right. John, thanks. Can you take me out then with uh, what's that uh, African uh, tribal and a Mexican chant? Oh yes, I can do that. Here you go. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Baninge. It's more like it's 101 coming up here toll free at 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's 1 800 5 800 866. Stay right there. Here we are at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival on the grounds of the Jim Beam Distillery, baby. Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 866. My take on your listener base is that they are very subpar in the intelligence IQ department. Oh, and you know, it's, 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 it's got to be a problem to have low self-esteem the way you do. You really should not see yourself that way. I mean, uh, I'm sure you're much more intelligent than you give yourself credit for. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, 
half of the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. On the grounds of the Jim Beam Distillery, it's the Tom Likas Show. It's Likas 101 at 1-800-5800-TOM. I am your professor. Let's say hello here to Bianca on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Professor Tom. Hi, Bianca. Um, so I pretty much agree with your observations on marriage, and I've been through it myself, so I'd know. But uh, I'm kinda, I kind of have a couple questions I want to ask you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I see your take on, uh, you know, how the money and the power gets you to girls, and there's no need to, uh, to give any kind of facade, you know. My question is, what besides the money do you have to offer a woman? I, really, I don't care because the length of time I'm with the average woman, by the time she figures out how little she's going to get out of it, I've moved on to the next victim. So it hasn't ever happened to you where, you know, you have your bullpen and there wasn't a girl who you preferred more than the rest and kind of ended up calling her more than the rest? And Not, not recently, that no. how everyone gets into a relationship almost accidentally? Well, put it this way. Uh, there's nobody in the bullpen I like so much that I'd want them to be the only pitcher on my uh, rotation. So you haven't found there just hasn't been anyone that was that was worth. No, it's the rest not for. worth the price you pay. Uh-huh. You see, we, by the way, before a woman moves in, and this isn't just me; it's most men I talk to. Whether you can grasp this or not, I don't know. Um, I just use myself as an example here. Before a woman moves in, everything I say is funny, everything I believe is true, everything I do is right. I am just the coolest guy to hang out with. I am so fantastic. And then after she moves in, everything I do is wrong. Everything I say is wrong. Nothing I say is funny anymore. It was amazing. I went from being the smartest, hippest guy in the room to being the stupidest a-hole on the face of the earth. Yeah, so, that, that's so here's what marriage the, does. That is exactly well, that's what right. marriage does. It's so, so here's the deal. So here's the deal. By keeping them with a carrot on a stick, <laughs> just hanging okay. the carrot out there. Okay. I am always treated like the funniest, hippest guy in the room because all these women wish they could get me to sign the contract, which I never do. So in their attempts to lure me in, they all laugh at my jokes. They all tell me that uh, I'm the funniest guy they ever met. But where's I'm... the trade-off? What trade-off? You get, you, you, get the, you get the rotation of girls. What are the girls getting? What are they getting? I don't really care. They uh, put it this way: it's for it's for them to decide what they're getting. What's what's in it? Well, I imagine they're getting something. It could be an orgasm. It could be the the thought that maybe. By the way, here's the other thing that women get. Uh, We always say that women like to buy fixer uppers. Uh, Women hear me on the radio ranting and raving about how I don't want to be committed and I don't want to be married. Women see me as a challenge. They say, "Oh, he'll change." I'll change him. Right. And they see me as a big challenge. Which, so for me, it's the perfect crime because there's more and more women who come along. And they go, oh, yeah, well, that's the other women. But I, I am going to change this guy. Right. So you, you just let them think they can. Let them work their magic. And then they all think they the can. Camera. They all think they can. Okay, but how, isn't it kind of impractical, you know, all your pointers and stuff on dating women works for you for obvious reasons. But what about all your viewers who the majority of don't make the money you make? But I didn't, but you don't understand, half my life I didn't make the money I make. Half my life I made nothing. But all these tips and things aren't going to work for your average Joe. Yes, they do because they worked for me when I made $28,000 a year. But on the one hand, you're saying, you know, it's because you have all this money, you don't need to wine and dine or prove anything. But I have, but you see, but you forget the part where I tell guys if they don't have a great career or they don't own a great business, lie about it. Isn't that kind of like saying it's okay for a girl to wear a padded bra? But they do. And uh, 60% know, of women, women dye their hair. Advice. Women dye their hair. The women wear, wear fake nails. Are you kidding me? But wouldn't you prefer a woman if you knew it was the real deal? Women dye their eyebrows. But if you're not worried about getting married, you have nothing to prove, why lie about what you do anyway? Women shave their backs. <laughs> you're dating the wrong women, Tom. I like the Mediterranean types. <laughs> well, I'm Mediterranean, I can promise you. I don't have hair on my back. But um, <laughs> you have, have you gotten a good look back there lately? The if I could be number one. 
Uh, oh, you wouldn't mind being in the bullpen if you could be number one. No, see, I'm, I'm, well, no, look, I'm practical. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right when you say that. And, you know, as far as marriage goes, it is true. And I think, honestly, your point of view is going to start kicking in. Probably not for another decade or two, but I, I, I imagine eventually society... Well, I think it's already like, happening. The marriage rate among 20-somethings is, is dropping like a rock. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's just like you know, we're going through rotation here. We're like eventually, you know, all the new generations are going to totally see it. We're going to look back 50 years from now and be like, God, I can't believe we're such idiots. We get, we get on MySpace. We look at uh, somebody on their webcam. They get naked. We go over their place. We hook up. We get tired of them. We move on. We send a text message to somebody We yeah. uh, in no, another I mean, country. So we get things. a discount airfare. We fly to Bulgaria to meet them. We have sex with them. We decide they're too far away. They're geographically undesirable. We stop seeing them we come back to the united states we send an email to somebody on a website somewhere we go beat them that's that, that's what it's turned into uh, yeah and, and you have to change with the times my my thing is though it's just i just think it's kind of funny because these all, all these guys that listen to you probably you know try the same tactics i just highly doubt it but they but they but you. again you why why would all these guys be my co-conspirators why would so many guys lie and call up and tell me they're getting more ass than the toilet seat since they started doing what i tell them to do you got me there wouldn't you think they'd be calling in going you know what I tried the way you tell me to do things, and it didn't work. And when you think we'd be getting those, so where are they? No, you definitely, you definitely read their minds, and I, I, and I do. You know, I think you, you tell it like it is, and, and you speak the minds of the majority of men. Um, I guess I just wonder how. I mean, I have told men, I have told men, if you live in a crummy apartment. Uh, drive around until you find a construction site in the nicest part of town where there's a renovation of a house going on. Then when you have a girl over to your place, tell her you're just living there temporarily while they're redoing your place. Offer to drive over at night and show her the renovations that are going on at your house. How is she going to know who owns that house? She doesn't. Eventually, she pictures herself, you know, planting tomatoes in the front garden and putting up a white picket fence, and the kids are running around in the backyard. She's imagining all this stuff at your house, which isn't really your house. Well, you, you take know, her back. It's okay just because you're kind of capitalizing on the superficial woman who is a gold digger and who does go for that. And well, which most hot chicks are. Yeah, no, I mean that's that's fine. You know, I guess you could go ahead and play that game, but. Um, I just think a lot of men kind of need some more validation eventually. You well, know? And guess what? They really then then they should do that, that eventually instead of getting married at 19 and 23 and having babies with women they're not even married to and all that crap that I hear on the show every week. I think we should all together get rid of that piece of paper called marriage and instead... Just hook um, up. Let's I all think just hook just up. People are going to be buying condos together, and that'll be that'll be their form of marriage. And stop and buying be condos. Buying start buying condoms. Okay, that's what I think yeah. the guys ought to be doing. That too. That too. But you see, Bianca, when it boils right down to it, you you agree with me more than you disagree with me, don't you? Yeah. No, I, I do, I'm trying to play devil's advocate. I do agree with you on a lot of your points, but I'm trying to look out for the women, and I'm just wondering. Where's the benefit for all Well, the here's the thing. If women are not, if women are not super, like, I'll tell you what, the best way for a woman to protect you, herself, you the, park, the best way money. for a woman to protect herself is not to be a superficial gold digger because these tricks only work on superficial gold diggers. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I agree with you because you're, you're cashing in on both type of women. And that's why I mean, if a woman type. says, if a woman says, if I'm in a bar and a woman says to me, don't talk to me unless you're a doctor. Uh-huh. Hi, I like to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Shapiro. Yeah. Well, I'll be I, I I'll think... be a doctor for an evening, okay? If you're that superficial, I'm going to lie to you and tell you I'm Dr. Goldstein. I'm telling you that. Well, it's funny because it had the opposite effect on me. Just last night I was out, and this guy started bragging about how, how well off he is. And and it was just such a turnoff, I started making fun of him, you know. And, well, um... see, then you don't have to worry about being a victim of a one-on-one student, then, do you? No, I don't, because I make my own money, and like I said, I got out of a marriage, and I realized that it's, it's I, I ended up paying a lot more than I got, and, you know, I definitely married for love, and I just realized that a piece of paper does not protect against anything, well, as a matter of fact. It's- that is certainly true. I wish I had more time, but Bianca, I thank you for the call. The Tom Likas Show.